Void safety. This is one of the most original aspects of Eiffel and also one of the most useful in practice if you want to produce programs that are guaranteeably safe and reliable. And it has no equivalent in any of the major programming languages, object-oriented or not, in their environments today. Void safety means the end of one of the major plagues of programming, null pointer dereferencing. To give you an idea of how important and critical this problem is, let me mention a citation of a few years ago by Tony Hoare. Tony Hoare is one of the most famous computer scientists alive, uh, Turing Award winner, Kyoto Prize winner. He wrote this, I call the invention of the null reference or void reference, same thing, my billion dollar mistake. In the design of the Algol W programming language in 1965, my goal was to ensure that all uses of references should be safe and checked by the compiler. But I couldn't resist, says Hora, the temptation to put in a null reference. It has led to innumerable errors, vulnerabilities, and crashes, which have probably caused a billion dollars of pain and damage in the last 40 years. Well, it's exactly that pain and damage that Eiffel's void safety protects you from. So what is it about? Our object-oriented programs, when they execute, basically do one thing again and again. It's this operation, x.f of rx, known as qualified calls. What does it mean? Well, we have an object, or we hope to have an object that we know through the name x in our program, and we apply to that object an operation, also known as a feature f, possibly with some arguments args, although the arguments are not going to play any role in this discussion and uh, that there doesn't have to be arguments. So what matters is x and f. x, we expect it to be an object, to denote an object. So if that's the case, there is no problem. We are going to apply f to that object. But in most cases in practice, x is not directly an object. Its value is a reference. Or pointer. It's essentially the same thing to an object. And the object itself will only be created explicitly at runtime. So until we create an object, we have a reference, but that reference may not be attached to any object. We say that it can be void or no. Void is more the Eiffel terminology. And so if the reference is void, then there is no object, and there's of course no way the execution can carry out this operation x.f because there is no object to apply f to. And what's going to happen is an exception. The, the call will crash, and usually the exception will cause the entire program execution to crash as well. So this is a constant danger which hangs over our heads when we are executing an object oriented program. And in ordinary approaches to programming, there is no protection against that danger. Such a protection is what Eiffel's void safety provides. Now we're going to see it at work. And so we're going to start uh, Eiffel Studio. Uh, for, uh, if you don't know how to start Eiffel Studio, use the instructions uh, here. We're just going to start a plain uh, execution of Eiffel Studio from a freshly installed uh, version. Against, again, you can find all the details here, so I'm going to create a new project. We don't need any particular graphics library. It's going to be very simple, so we're going to create it. And let me call it Project 1. And the root class is going to be Application. So it's going to compile now, and there's some background compilation that happens the first time around. And here is our basic class application with it just uh, it has uh, just one thing in its make procedure it prints a uh, hello Eiffel world so now we can run it and this is what happens it uh, produces uh, hello uh, Eiffel world and that's it okay so now we are going to add a new class uh, class person uh, here uh, let's call it that way, a class person, and a person is not going to be 
The very interesting notion of person, it simply, uh, the object simply has an age, which is an integer. That's all we need about person right now. And uh, we, we compile this, of course, although we could compile later. And now I'm going back to class application. I need a little more space here. And I'm going to add a local, in application, I'm going to add to procedure make a local variable x, or let's call it p of type person. And before I print hello Eiffel world, I'm going also to print the age of p, p dot h. Also, I to, uh, to separate the uh, output, I'm going to print a new line so that it's uh, cleaner, io dot put new line, so that it's not messed up uh, with the uh, next line. And uh, now before, of course, I can print the age of a person, I need to create that object, create p. So everything sh should be fine. Let's uh, run it. It also compiles and you can see that it prints the age. Now the age has been initialized to zero. We haven't done anything for that, but since age is an integer field, its initial va default value is zero. So now let's assume that I am not very careful and I uh, forgot to create the object. So I'm coming in and out, as you can see, the, the create instruction. And clearly this cannot work because we're trying to print the age of an object P that does not exist. P is going to be a void reference. Now let's go back in time to when Eiffel did not have void safety, we're going to disable void safety. So let's go to project settings and you will see that in project one here, there is uh, a, an option to, uh, to have various levels of void safety. Normally you should use complete, that's the default, but let's turn off void safety. So don't do this at home, of course, unless you're playing with the mechanism and testing it as I'm doing now, but we're going to see what happens in such a case. So fasten your seatbelt. We are going to compile, which doesn't pose any problem, and then run. And so what happens, of course, is that it cannot work. And you can see that we are in the debugger here automatically because an exception has been raised the exception void target, a feature call on void target because there is no object associated with P. So if we were if this were a real situation, then you would be able to find out what's going on by using the debugger. This is not our purpose at this point. We know what's going on. And so that's exactly the kind of thing that happens in all major languages today, object-oriented or not, you get an exception, you get a crash, and this is exactly also the kind of thing that Eiffel's void safety protects you against. And so, uh, how does it work? Well, this is going to be the subject of the next videos in uh, this uh, sequence, but let me give you the basic idea. It's to generalize a success story, the, the static type checking success story. In typed object-oriented languages, when we perform this operation x dot f of rx, we are protected because in typed object oriented languages, every variable is declared with a type. We have some rules on assignment. You can only assign from a conformance source to a, a, to, to a target. And we all, the compiler is at compile time statically going to accept this call only if it can guarantee that the type of X has a feature F with the acceptable arguments. And so when we execute this, we know that we are applying an appropriate operation, but that assumes that, assumes that the object, of course, exists. And so what we're doing with void safety is extending the static compile time guarantee to void safety as well. So if we go back to our Example, let's finish execution uh, here. Uh, we are now going to go back to the standard options, project settings. We uh, turn voice safety back 
on to complete and we try to compile again. And if we look at the error list, we see that there's an error that says a variable is not properly set. Here we can see a few details and we are going, of course, in the next videos to see exactly what not properly set means. But essentially what it means is that you have not guaranteed to the compiler that when you call age on P, P will be non-void. In fact, P might be void. So the idea will be to do exactly the same thing for voice safety that we do for static type checking. And in the next videos, starting with voice safety in I4 part two, we're going to see exactly the mechanisms, the, the simple mechanisms that enable you to get rid of this voice safety plague in I4 once and for all.